Welcome to the intriguing world of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a classic 1964 TV series that delves into the depths of the ocean's mysteries. As you embark on this underwater journey, you might find yourself pondering, what classic Hollywood actor from this series left an indelible mark as your favorite? This iconic show has stood the test of time, becoming an enduring symbol of the industry. What qualities do you believe contribute to its lasting impact? Is it the gripping storytelling, the innovative special effects, or perhaps the timeless themes that resonate across generations? Before we plunge into some fascinating facts about the series, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this underwater adventure. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Now let's explore some random facts that add depth to the legacy of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Did you know that the show's futuristic Seaview submarine was initially envisioned as a flying vehicle? Or that it featured a cameo by a young Martin Landau, foreshadowing his later fame? As we unravel the layers of this classic series, we invite you to share your thoughts and reflections. What aspects of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea captivate you the most? What keeps drawing you back to this timeless piece of television history? Feel free to dive into the discussion, and remember, your stories matter. Share them in the comments below. Let's celebrate the legacy of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea together. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a pioneering 1964 TV series, emerged from the visionary mind of Irwin Allen, renowned for his knack in blending science fiction with thrilling narratives. Set aboard the futuristic Seaview submarine, the show chronicles the daring exploits of the crew led by Admiral Nelson and Captain Crane as they navigate uncharted depths, facing perilous encounters and extraterrestrial threats. The iconic characters, including the resourceful Admiral Nelson and the steadfast Captain Crane, brought depth to the narrative, each contributing to the series' unique appeal. The show's seamless fusion of speculative technology, underwater exploration, and suspenseful storytelling set it apart, captivating audiences with its groundbreaking visual effects for its time. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea not only solidified its place in television history, but also influenced subsequent sci-fi and adventure genres, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. Its impact resonates in the continued fascination with oceanic mysteries and the enduring appeal of exploring the unknown depths. The legacy of this underwater odyssey endures, a testament to its groundbreaking vision and enduring narrative. During the filming of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the monster's web, a pivotal moment occurred when Richard Basehart, who portrayed Admiral Nelson, fell ill. This led to a creative challenge as the episode had to be reworked, with a stand and used for many shots of Basehart's character, lines dubbed, and subsequent episodes adjusted to accommodate his absence. This unforeseen circumstance, however, didn't hinder the show's overall success. Interestingly, the circuitry room in the series consistently showcased an unlocked door after explosions or fires, adding a subtle yet consistent element of suspense. This recurring detail, whether intentional or not, became a distinctive feature for fans of the show. Moreover, the pilot episode, 11 Days to Zero, initially filmed in color, was aired in black and white. The decision to showcase it in its original color format was made by the Sci-Fi Channel in 1993, allowing audiences to experience the episode as originally intended. This unique aspect combined with the Season 1, Volume 1 DVD's inclusion of both the black and white and color versions provides a fascinating glimpse into the evolution of television presentation. In summary, the challenges faced during the filming of The Monster's Web, the recurring unlocked door in the circuitry room, and the pilot episode's color to black and white transformation highlight the intricacies of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. These details, often overlooked, contribute to the show's enduring legacy and showcase the adaptability of the production team in the face of unexpected circumstances. David Hedison initially declined the role of Lee Crane until he discovered that Richard Basehart was set to portray Admiral Nelson. This casting decision proved pivotal for the iconic 1964 TV series, setting the stage for a dynamic on-screen duo. Interestingly, the show became known for a recurring visual technique called Seaview Rock and Roll, a clever ploy to simulate the submarine's impact by having characters lurch to camera movements on the otherwise static set. This technique, though an old movie trick, gained prominence in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, distinguishing it from other shows of the time. As the series progressed into its second season, the episode Jonah and the Whale marked a significant shift by being the first to be broadcast in color. Accompanying this change was a redesign of the Seaview, 
featuring alterations like a single set of observation windows and a hatch for the flying sub. This transition also introduced new uniforms and the iconic flying sub with multiple models used throughout seasons two to four. The behind the scenes dynamics of casting choices and innovative visual techniques, along with the transition to color broadcasting and redesign of the sea view offer a glimpse into the evolving landscape of the show. These elements contributed to the unique charm of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, making it a standout in the realm of classic television. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea stands out not just for its gripping narrative, but also for intriguing behind-the-scenes details. One notable fact is the seamless connection between the movie and the TV series through actor Del Munro. He portrayed Siemenkowski in the movie and seamlessly transitioned to Seaman Kowalski on the TV show, making him the sole actor to bridge both mediums with virtually the same character. Beyond the screen, the show shares an interesting link with other iconic series. The props used in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea found their way into Lost in Space, the Time Tunnel, Land of the Giants, and Batman. This interconnected use of props adds a layer of continuity to the broader universe of Irwin Allen's productions. Moreover, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea boasts a significant achievement in its longevity. It holds the distinction of being the longest running among Irwin Allen's science fiction series, spanning four seasons from its debut in 1964 until 1968. This enduring run attests to the show's enduring popularity and cultural impact. As we delve into the depths of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, exploring its cast connections, shared props, and impressive run, we uncover a multifaceted legacy that extends beyond the boundaries of the TV screen. These factors contribute to the show's unique place in the landscape of classic television, solidifying its standing as a pioneer in the realm of science fiction and adventure. As we sail through the vast ocean of memories, it's undeniable that the 1964 TV series remains an indelible mark on the canvas of our collective imagination a voyage that transcends time, space, and the depths of the human psyche. Like a submerged treasure waiting to be rediscovered, the series has left its enigmatic echo in the minds of those who dare to explore its narrative abyss. In the quiet chambers of recollection, ponder upon the characters who navigated the uncharted waters of your own emotions. Did you find kinship with the Valiant crew, or perhaps discover an unlikely ally in the twists of the plot? As we reflect on these submerged moments, let the ripples of nostalgia bring forth your personal connection to the series. This is merely a journey beneath the waves. It's an odyssey into the recesses of your own experiences. What mysteries were unlocked? What emotions stirred? And what lessons learned as you ventured alongside the characters through uncharted territory? The beauty of such classics lies not just in the narrative, but in the profound impact they have on the individual. Now it's your turn to share the treasures you've unearthed from the depths of your memories. What scenes still linger like phosphorescent creatures in the midnight ocean? What dialogues echo in the corridors of your mind, resonating with the timeless cadence of a sonar pulse? Your thoughts are the compass guiding us through uncharted waters. So, fellow adventurer, drop anchor in the comments below and let the sea of discourse flow. Share your favorite memories, unravel the narratives that left an indelible mark, and dive into the depths of conversation with fellow enthusiasts. Let our collective memories resurface like bubbles breaking through the surface, each one carrying a story worth sharing. Thank you for embarking on this voyage of reminiscence with us. Your time and thoughts are the wind in our sails, propelling this conversation into unexplored territories. Until our paths cross again, may your memories of the series be as enduring as the mysteries it unfolded. Sail on, storytellers of the sea.